presence of God's Word. Again, that 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we'll be reading verses 11 through 21. Being it's a significant portion of Scripture, I will read it to you tonight for sake of time as well. Again, that 2 Corinthians chapter 12, starting with verse 11, working our way to verse 21. The Bible says, I am become a fool in glorying, ye have compelled me. For I ought to have been commended of you, for in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. For what is it wherein ye were inferior to other churches, except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you? Forgive me this wrong. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And I will verily, uh, I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. But be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. Did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I sent unto you? I desired Titus, and with him I sent a brother. Did Titus make a gain of you? Walked we not in the same spirit? Walked we not in the same steps? Again, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you. We speak before God in Christ. But we do all things, dearly beloved, for your edifying. For I fear, lest, when I come, I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as ye would not, lest there be debates, envyings, wraths, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, tumults, and lest... When I come again, my God will humble me among you, and that I shall bewail many which have sinned already, and have not repented of the uncleanness, and fornication, and lasciviousness which they have committed. Heavenly Father, thank you again for the precious word of God. Again, I pray that as a church we would learn from this epistle. It is an epistle written from Paul to the church, but yet I say, it is an epistle written from the Holy Spirit to your people. Again, we thank you so much, Lord, for this, this word of God. I do pray that we would desire to seek it out, to search it out, to find you in it, and Lord, to live by it. Again, we thank you so much for the church you have brought together in this place in Bradford, the Bradford Baptist Church. I do pray, Lord, a special blessing upon those here tonight. And may your word go forward that it may have its way and will in our lives. May you get the glory and honor that is due your name. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. So I was asked to keep it short. Mind you, Pastor, you only gave me 15 minutes to finish up my sermon for tonight. But as the great Paul Harvey said, and now, the rest of the story. I spoke to you last week concerning a word called guile. Anybody remember that preaching that I had last week about the word guile? I know pastor's shaking his head. No, you weren't even here, brother. I know. But uh, interestingly enough, how, how important that word is. And, uh, you know... Revelation, it says, there, there, in their mouth was found no guile. We know that in Christ's mouth there was found no guile. In, in I believe it was um, um, Nathaniel's mouth. He was an Israelite of where, uh, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. And we talked about that that uh, definition, uh, the guile, uh, the craft, uh, the deceit, deceitful or deceitfully. The falsity, the fa uh, fakeness or feigned, the subtlety, 
which um, we had already t touched on about Satan himself and treachery. But as we continue on through this portion of Scripture, uh, I'm going to start in verse 19 for uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 19. We just read it. 2 Corinthians 12, 19, it says, And again, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you? We speak before God and Christ, but we do all things. Get, I, I want you to, to focus on that. Four words right there. We do all things, dearly beloved, for your edifying. We do all things. Well, let's look at some verses that pertain to that very specific uh, sentence, doing all things. If you would, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. I almost went the wrong way. Philippians chapter 2. I almost went to the left instead of the right. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 14. <clears throat> Philippians 2.14. This is a commandment given to the church. And the commandment says, Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Let's read that again. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. How many of us like to complain? How many of us like to complain about one another? How many can find a fault in somebody? I, I saw the hands. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Somebody is truthful in here. Amen. We can always find something to complain about, especially, I mean, we're dealing with personalities. Every one of us has a, our own specific personality. Every one of us has our own uh, take on life, shall I say. Every one of us has a, an individual fingerprint, and that fingerprint is just like our personality. Everyone has a different one. But interestingly enough, Paul writes to the church at Philippi and he says, do all things. How many things? Somebody say all. all. Do all things. Again, let's, do, let's say that again. Do all things. The pastor's like, no. <laughs> Mind you, that's a commandment. He didn't say if you feel like it. He didn't say if you want to. He didn't say if it fits your fancy. He didn't say if, 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 you, if, 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 if the Spirit moves you. He didn't say that. He commanded us, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Can we do that at work? Oh, that's a tough one now, isn't it? Can we do that at work? Can we do that at school? Ladies. Can, can we do that at school? Do all things without murmurings and complainings or disputings? Can you? Can I ask your teacher that? No. <laughs> That's what I thought. Disputings. Arguing with one another. We all have our little arguments. We all have our little, as Brother uh, Chavez would say, our little tiffs, tiffies. Is that what he called it, Tiffies, or Tiffs, or something like that? And somebody remember that? We all have our little disputes amongst one another. But the Bible says, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Let's continue on, Philippians 4.13. Some people might know this one. It's a great memory verse if you don't know it. Uh, it's been preached I don't know how many times in how many different ways. But the statement goes this, I can do all things. What's that? <laughs> Come on, I want to hear it. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. All things I can do. Is that true? I mean, we've been given a commandment to do all things without murmurings and disputing. So when he says, I can do all things through Christ... That means that it is possible now, isn't it? As a Christian, as a born-again believer who strengthens us, we should be able to do all things. Especially when it comes to without murmurings and disputings. Can we? 
Can we as a church get together and be able to work with one another without complaining about the, the task that we've been given to do, without complaining about the person I have to work with? Can we get together and do all things without murmurings and disputings? Obviously we can. The Bible claims that we can. But let's continue on. I know that was a little too much for you, so let's continue on. In that very same verse that we went through in 2 Corinthians 12, 19, he says, we can do all things, dearly beloved. The last three words are, for your edifying. For your edifying. Don't, don't, who here likes to be lifted up? Who here likes to be, uh, to, to, to be raised up, to be feeling good about yourself, to have somebody talk about you and make you feel better about yourself? We all like to feel that way, don't we? Interestingly enough, Paul is telling them that very same thing. I, we do all things to your edifying. We want to raise you up. We want to lift you up. We want to see great things done amongst yourselves for God's sake, not for yours. If you would, turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. This portion of the sermon is brought to you by Squirt Zero. Amen. I'm trying, brother. I'm trying to get it going here. I have yet to get in a phone call, but I'm, I'm trying. Amen. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 14.5, please. 1 Corinthians 14.5. The Bible says, I would, I would that ye all spake with tongues. I'm going to stop right there. Who here can speak without a tongue? Now that, I, I, I have a, a scientific experiment for you all. If you're willing to do it. Stick out your tongue and grab a hold of it with your, and tie talking and making any sense of what you're trying to say. Not bad, huh? But, <laughs> so, so, so you know, listen, I kind of got to make it funny. Amen. I would that you spoke with tongues. Now, you know what I'm talking about here. Now, I'm not talking about the tongues movement that we have today. I'm not talking about the, the jibber-jabber and the babble that, that the, the uh, charismatic church is bringing forward saying that is, that is tongues. It is not. Tongues is merely another language of which you learn. Who, anybody know how to speak Spanish? Even un poquito? A little bit? Okay. Uh, how about French? Some people know how to speak French. German. Uh, you know, I, I could go on and on. Some know a little bit of a different language. Would you be able to interpret that language? That's what has to come with tongues. If you read what he says about tongues, if, if somebody is speaking in tongues, there has to be somebody that can interpret. Has to be. Can I tell you, that is a gift of God. But can I tell you, what they do out there is not what the Bible talks about. That is a, a falsity that they bring forward. But let's continue on in this verse. But rather that ye prophesied. He'd rather you tell the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to this lost and dying world out there. He does, that this is, he'd rather you tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ than to try to speak in another language that means nothing to you. He goes on to say, For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive ed edifying. Now, again, we just read about he desired that all that they do was to bring edification to that church. I believe I mentioned it last week, and I'm going to mention it again. That which is, that which is perfect is come. That which is... Uh, um, What's that? In part, thank you, that it is done away with. We have what is perfect in our hands. Can everybody take your Bible and raise it up for me? I don't see very many. There we go. Praise the Lord. This is perfect. 
This is perfect. This is preserved. It's been preserved over how many years for us? It is the precious, perfect Word of God. There is no, uh, there is no imperfection in there. There is no, uh, shall I say, mistakes within the Word of God. That is a perfect Word. And God, when God claims that it's perfect, do you think He knows what He means? Do you think that He knows exactly what He's talking about when He says, My Word is perfect? If they're spirit and they are life, they have to be perfect. But let's continue on. If you would, 1 Corinthians 14.12. 1 Corinthians 14.12. You're already in 1 Corinthians 14. I just want you to skip down a couple verses to verse 12. It says, Even so ye... For as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. He says there's nothing wrong with being zealous of these spiritual gifts. Who here likes spiritual gifts? Well, let me ask that again. Who here likes spiritual gifts? The gift of giving? the gift of uh, edification, the gift of, of helps. The gift, uh, listen, there are plenty of gifts out there still for the church today. Don't let anybody take that away from you. And it's important to have because if nobody has it, what's the sense of the church? He says, but seek that ye may excel to the edifying or the lifting up or the encouraging of the church. Meaning it's not for you. It's not for, for me specific. It's for everybody else around me. It's to encourage, it's to, to, to uh, bring up in, in stature in somebody's mind. It's not for my own. It's for everybody else around me. Let's continue on to verse 26. 1 Corinthians 14.26 How is it then, brethren, when you come together? Every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto, what is that last word? Edifying. It's not for my benefit. It's not for the personal benefit of anybody. It's to help one another in the church. Can I tell you, life is hard enough as it is. Girls, life is hard enough as it is. That's why we can come together so we can help one another. So, so we can encourage one another. So we can love one another. So we can help one another in the difficult times and in the, in the hard times and yet enjoy when the good times come. I don't know about you, I like good times. I do. But can I tell you, there has to come bad times. Tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience and experience hope. But we don't want tribulation. We just want, this, we, we just want the patience. But that's not how God works this. God says there's going to be troubles and trials and tribulations in your life. Now can I tell you, would you rather go through them alone by yourself? Or would you rather have a group of people surrounding you, encouraging you to the next step? I'd much rather have people around me helping me along my way. To help carry me when I fall. Anybody ever fallen? Let me ask that again. Anybody ever fallen? It's not an easy time, is it? And the older you get, the harder it is to get up. Amen, brother. And I'm not picking on anybody. It's the truth. And me being a big boy, it makes it that much harder. Amen. I heard some chuckles. Praise the Lord. And it's true. Let's continue on. Ephesians chapter 4, please. Ephesians chapter 4. I told my daughter I'm trying to hurry. I am. Ephesians. So what's that, brother? Slow listeners. Ain't my fault. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 12, please. Ephesians 
Ephesians 4.12 says, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Let's, let's back up a little bit. Let's go to verse 11, please. Verse 11. Because the Bible says, And he gave some. Well, let me ask, who to give it to? It's to the church. So what did he give to the church? Well, let's see what he's... Let's, let's see this list of what he gave to the church. He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. For, or because of this, the perfecting of the saints. Who here is born again? Who here is a saint? Everybody better raise their hand that's born again. Because according to the Bible... You are a saint. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. I'm buzzing. Somebody's trying to tell me something. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Can I tell you, every one of us has a ministry. Every one of us, God desires us to do something for Him in this place. For one another. Not for your benefit, but for everybody else's. He has a ministry for every person that sits in this place. Whether young or old whether male or female, whether full of hair or bald, whether fat or skinny, God has a ministry for you. And He desires that you fulfill that ministry. This is why He gives you a pastor and a teacher. This is why He gives you people to, to raise you up because without that, it is difficult to continue in the ministry. We praise the Lord for the ministry He's put us into, and He will enable us. But yet He puts people in our paths, just like he, gave, he, he had Titus and Timothy to help Him along His path. We also have people in our own church that is willing to do that very same thing. Let's continue on, if you would, uh, Ephesians 4.16. Ephesians 4.16. Ephesians 4.16 says this, From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Do you realize that you're a body? Do you realize you are the body of Christ that has come together in this place? Who's the hand? Who's the foot? Who's the eye? Who's the ear? Who's the appendix? Who's the heart? What'd you say? You're the head? Oh, you're the appendix. There are other, oh, there are other things. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> but can I tell you that every one of us is here to be fitly joined with one another to bring glory and honor to Him, to worship Him in spirit and in truth, to do the ministry He has called us to. Because you can't do it alone. Just like school, you can't do it alone. You have to have a teacher. You have to have somebody that is a little more knowledgeable than you are to teach you a little further. Don't ask me to teach you trigonometry. I'm, I'm probably lower than you are right now. Okay? But can I tell you, that's exactly why we have one another. Somebody can lead somebody else in a way that they need to learn. Somebody can, can help another person when, when things are down and things are difficult and say, how can I help you, brother? Even if it's just a prayer. Even if it's just a kind word. Even if it's just a, a, a word of, of edification, shall we say, to lift one another up. I don't know about you, sometimes it's nice to get those little notes that say, hey, thinking of you. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm praying for you, and I hope they literally are. When somebody ever comes to me and says, will you pray for me? Yes, let's pray right now. Why? Because I know in five seconds, if I walk away and promise I'll pray, I'll forget all about their problem, and I won't remember what they need. And can I tell you what, a, what, what better of a testimony than to stand there? They'll know that you're praying for them because you'll be praying for them right there. And I don't care who's there, and I don't care who's walking by. Hey, they need to hear it too, maybe. Maybe they need to hear that God is good and is willing to hear the prayer. God is good, amen? All the time. 
He's good to the just and the unjust. Praise the Lord. Let's continue on. Verse 29, Ephesians 4, 29. I wish, I wish that we all would get this. I really do. I don't know how many people that claim they're Christian and still deal with this right here. The Bible says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Let me say that again. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Oh, be careful, little tongue, what you say. Oh, be careful, little tongue, what you say. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little tongue, what you say. He's watching. He's listening. He knows everything. He knows everything you're going to say before you even say it. He knows every thought that comes through that head before you even think it. Boy, that's a scary thing, isn't it? To know that God knows everything that you're already thinking before it even comes across your mind. God knows all things. That's why He's omniscient. Let us never forget that He knows all things. Let no corrupt communica communication proceed out of, out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Let me ask you this. Have you ever said a swear word in a good context that it would lift somebody's spirits up? Can everybody say, no? How can it be? How can it be that I would, would spew something that nasty out of my mouth that it would be an encouragement to somebody? It's usually to break somebody down or something down. It's rarely ever, if, if ever, used in a good way. In fact, let me say, it's never used in a good way. This is why you have to be careful of what comes out of that mouth. Even a little white lie, shall I say. Now, I know corrupt communication not only proceeds out of your mouth, but it's the manner of which you live as well. Communication is the way in which you live. And when he says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, he also means in the way in which you live. Because you may you know, you've may you heard people say they, they can talk the talk, but they can't walk the walk. Well, it's time to talk the walk and the walk the talk. Let's make sure it's together. Let's continue on. One last verse, if you would. 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 4. 1 Timothy 1.4. All these verses I'm going through are about the edification, the lifting up, the encouraging of brothers and sisters in Christ. Paul here writes to Timothy and says this, Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions, rather than godly edifying which is in faith. He says, so do. We need godly edifying. We need godly encouragement, not worldly encouragement. Can I tell you, the, and in fact, I've, I've preached this before at a funeral about comfort, but it goes along the same lines. That encouragement from a godly person is so much sweeter. The encouragement that the world gives will fade away very quickly. But the encouragement that God can give you through His people can last a lifetime. Because they know you'll be there if you truly mean it. Because God loves you. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. How is He going to strengthen you? He's going to bring somebody by that says, listen, I have an idea what you're going through. I will pray for you. In fact, let's pray right now. I don't know about you, I love being around brothers and sisters in Christ. I love being around a crowd of brothers and sisters in Christ that is worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Not one that is, well, I, I digress, let's continue on. The latter part of 
what I read back in First Corinthians or Second Corinthians chapter twelve and verse twenty says this. For I fear lest when I come I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as you would not, lest there be debates, envyings, wraths, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, and tumults. If you would, turn with me to Galatians chapter five. Galatians chapter five. This is where we'll finish out tonight. Galatians chapter five. Does anybody know what's in the Galatians chapter 5? What's that? Fruit of the Spirit. What happens before the fruit of the Spirit, though? There's a, a list of things that, that are brought forward before the fruit of the Spirit. The works of the flesh. Can I tell you that that what we, which we just went through in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 20 is almost the exact same list that we find called the works of the flesh. How many of us find ourselves in the work of the flesh faster than we find ourselves in the fruit of the Spirit? Amen. We have a problem. We, we have a problem. And this is why we need godly people around us to encourage us to keep us going. Because how easy it is to fall back into the flesh than to continue in the Spirit without somebody helping you. Praise God we have the Lord Jesus Christ who is willing to help us. But can I tell you, He gives us. He, you just read that, 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 that verse which says He gave us some apostles, some prophets. He gave us a list of those which He gave us to help us along, to edify us. And sometimes we need those same people when we come to this list right here. If you would, again, Galatians chapter 5, let's start in verse 19 through 21. The Bible says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest. What does it mean to manifest? Pastor has brought it out multiple times. I know he has. So I'm just going to reiterate what he says. Anybody ever seen the 2024 Chevy Corvette? Okay. Yeah, I, I knew I'd get somebody on that. So you go to a car show and they have it shrouded with a sheet or whatever it is, right? And... So how do you manifest something? You take that sheet, just like they do in the car show, and they snap that sheet off, and there it is all in its glory. The 2024 Chevy Corvette. Not really, but I, you, that, I, I want you to see that that's what it means to manifest something. It means to bring it out all in its glory right before your eyes. The works of the flesh are manifest. It's right before your eyes, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, idolatry, excuse me, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I, uh, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Do you know what all those words mean? No? Well, let's go through some real quick, if you would, please. Let's start with lasciviousness. We, we, I hope you know what adultery is. and I, Well, I hope you don't. But I hope you know what the definition of it is. I hope you know what the definition of fornication is. It's sexual sin. I'm just going to st state it right there. It's sexual sin. It is. Period. All adultery is fornication, but not all fornication is adultery. Fornication is very broad-ranged. Adultery is very specific. Adultery deals with a husband and wife in, in, in the marriage bed, and, uh, and fornication is very broad, very open. Well, let's continue on, if you would, please. What's the next one? Uncleanness. I hope you know what uncleanness is. Anybody heard the, the statement, cleanliness is nearest to godliness? Anybody ever heard that? Have you ever heard that before? You just did. Cleanliness is nearest to godliness. That means keep your rooms clean. <laughs> Actually, that means keep your minds clean. Keep your heart clean. That's important. And it's going to be even more important the older you get, young ladies, young men. It's going to be very important to you someday that you keep 
your mind and your heart clean. It is, for, it is going to be very difficult in this world. And that's why this is so important. Let me continue on. Uh, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. There's a word. There's a big word. Lasciviousness means lustfulness. Usually a sexual lust. Meaning I desire something that I should not be looking at. Even Christ says, if you look at a woman... With lust in your heart, you've already committed fornication with her. Or adultery, excuse me, adultery with her. That's pretty significant. Just to look, to take that second look, to to take that stare. God says it's wrong. God says he has the one ready for you. Quit looking around for somebody else. Let me continue on. Idolatry. I hope you know what idolatry is. It means to worship something outside of God alone. How many of us fall into that? Money, power, prestige, cars, homes. Shall I continue? I know. Keep it, keep it in the wheelhouse, brother. I get it. But we all deal with it. We all deal with a, a, a love of money in this world. Especially... In the United States of America. Let me continue on. Witchcraft. Do you know what witchcraft is? What is it, bud? What's witchcraft? Like Harry Potter. You're right. Is that a good thing? According to the Bible, is that a good thing? No, you're right. Thank you. So you know. You know that it's wrong. How old are you? 11. Even an 11-year young man can tell you that it's wrong. He, didn't, he doesn't want to admit it, but he knows deep down in that it's wrong. Let's continue. Actually, what is it? What's, what's is as the sin of witchcraft? Rebellion. rebellion. Thank you. Who here is rebellious? <laughs> Don't be pointing. Everybody better be pointing. Raising your own hands. We all have dealings with rebellion in our lives. Do we not? Every one of us wants to rebel against what we're told. When, when you're told to do something, well, wait a minute. I, you sh- I, I, I don't think that's right. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. What did they do with witches back then? Back in the biblical times, what did they do with them? They killed him. Actually, they used to burn him. Anybody want to be burned today? I'm sure we could find some stakes out there. I know you just put out a bunch of of, uh, boards and such out there. I'm sure we could figure out something to put together. I don't want to be either. Praise God for His mercy. Uh, How about hatred? Does anybody, anybody know what hatred is? Amen. I hope we all know what hatred is. What did Jesus say about hatred? If you hate your brother without cause, you are a murderer. You didn't know that, did you? To hate somebody means that you are as much as a murderer. That's something to think about, isn't it? How many of us have have despised somebody or hated somebody? I saw that brother passing notes. Amen. How many have hated somebody or despised somebody without cause? Just because they, the, their personality didn't fit with yours. Because you, you thought something different about them than what you should have. Well, let's continue on. I know I'm getting long-winded here. How about variance? Variance. Well, variance is this. Disagreeable. Who here likes to be disagreeable? Who here has ever been disagreeable? Amen. Amen. Ladies. <laughs> yeah. You like to disagree with one another, don't you? Uh-huh. Yep. The Bible calls it variance. That's, that's why it's called, listen up, that's why it's called the work of the flesh. Because it shouldn't be that way. Um, in fact, you should love one another more than you despise one another. More than you fight with one another. Listen, this is to, this is to the church. 
The church is dealing with this. Look around you. you how many times did you raise your hand? You're dealing with the same things. Dare we look outside of here and say, well, they're doing it. They're not in the house of God. They're not listening to the word of God being preached. That's why they're out there. But how's it go? If judgment comes in the house of God, how much worse is it for them out there? How important is it that you hear the word of God being preached? How, how important is it that you know these definitions? Let me continue on. I'm almost done. Kind of. Emulations. Anybody know what emulations are? Okay, let me tell you. Emulations are envious rivalry or comparing. Comparing one another to one another. The Bible says you're not wise. We shouldn't be comparing ourselves to one another. Who are to we be? We, who are we to be comparing ourselves to? How about the Lord Jesus Christ? Okay, God, you're, you're good. But let's say the Lord Jesus Christ, because He is God. He's God in flesh. He came so that we would learn from His footsteps, so that we could be more conformed to His image, not the image of this world. We talked about emulations. How about wrath? Anybody know what wrath is? My, my children know what wrath is. They've felt my wrath. My wrath is in the backs, hanging up on, the, uh, on my bookshelf back there. The, amen. How about strife? Anybody know what strife is? Fightings? Fightings amongst one another? Who here likes strife? Who here has... Listen, I don't know about you, but I get a pit in my stomach anytime I hear somebody argue. I do. I hate it. My, my parents did it all the time and I hated that feeling. And I still do to today. Why? Because the Bible says there should be no strife amongst us. That is a work of the flesh. Seditions. There's another big word. What's seditions? It means resistance to lawful authority. Who here has trouble with that? Let me ask you this. You're going 55 or 58 miles an hour in a 55 mile an hour zone and you get pulled over. Are you going to be resistant to lawful authority? Are you going to talk back to the officer? I was only going 58. What's the law say? What was that sign that you just passed that said had two big numbers on it that said 55? Five? Do you have any justification of going against lawful authority? I know, brother, we sang it yesterday, but that's not here nor there. But seriously, I want you to think about that. How difficult is it? Let's finish this out. Seditions, I did that, right? Uh, heresies. Anybody know what heresies are? False teachings. Has there been any false teachings in this place? <laughs> Pastor's like, yeah. Can I tell you, I've never noticed though. It's not like somebody is trying to draw anybody out of here because of it. That's exactly what a heresy is. It's trying to draw somebody away from the true knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. To draw somebody away from the true, true sayings of the, Lord, of, of the Word of God. Well, let's continue on. Envyings. Anybody ever been envious? Green with envy? You wanted some, somebody's... Uh, uh, was it, what's the new Xbox? Xbox what? One X? Is that what it is? Is anybody? Somebody knows. What's that? Is the One X? Series X. Series X. Okay, thank you. Anybody want one of those real bad, so bad that you would go and steal it? I'll bet there's some in here that would. Now it may not be that because I know I've I've touched on a specific, but can I tell you? Let me. I, I mean. Is there anybody here that would feel the same way about a log cabin out in the woods, out in the middle of nowhere, with a stream running by, and a lake out front? I, I see, I see, yeah, yeah. Envyings. And you know the person that owns it? 
and you want to be there so bad, you'd love to move them out. Yeah, yeah, amen. Murders, drunkenness, revelings. What's revelings? Revelings are disputing, or I'm sorry, disruptive partying. Woo! Who said Joe? Did I hear that right? Somebody say Joe. Disruptive part. Are you a part of your brother? No. What's up with that? No way. No way. Disruptive partying. Can I ask how many wedding receptions have been completely demolished because of that very same thing right there? Because people have gotten drunk, because they got the beer muscles, because they decided that they were going to take one another out and go pummel each other. And then there's arguments between the husband and wife and between family and family. Does it ever go well? No, it doesn't. And that's why God says these things should not be so. This is a work of the flesh and such like. Can I tell you that's not an exhaustive list? That is a, a very specific list. I know I've went a long time, and please forgive me. Please forgive me. Um, but now's now, Pastor. Like now, but now is the time that we enjoy a time of feasting, not how did I put it? Not uh, reveling. Yeah, not reveling. You're right. Now's the time to enjoy a time of fellowship. Not have to worry about the beer muscles. Not have to worry about the the infighting and the outfightings and taking somebody out back and pummel them and uh, we don't have to worry about I hope we don't have to worry about that kind of stuff praise God we have the fruit of the spirit love joy peace long su long suffering wow I think I missed a few in there love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance no I got it right long suffering hey can you ladies be long-suffering to one another? How about the rest of us? Can we be long-suffering with each one another? Isn't that what the Bible's commanded us to do? Be long-suffering with one another? Yes, it has. Heavenly Father, thank You so much for the precious Word of God, and we thank You so much that You have brought us together to hear the Word of God. I thank You for my little girl who's coming to the piano right now. Lord, I thank You for the ministry the ministry that You've put her into. God, I pray that You enable her and strengthen her. I pray for her teachers even now, Lord, as they are ready to bring forward lessons that would help her through her life. Lord, again, I thank You so much for the ministry You've put her, put her here to. And God, I just ask that You would bless her for that. I thank you for Blaine and Megan who are here tonight. I thank you for all those that have come tonight that uh, normally don't come on a Sunday night, but I praise you that they are here tonight. I pray that they got something out of this message tonight and that it might bring something to mind that they did not realize before. Lord, may your, may your Word work in their hearts and their lives that they may be more conformed to you. May you get all the glory, honor, praise, and worship. It is certainly do your name, not only tonight, but every night. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.